we're going to talk about the book How to Perfect Your Golf Swing by Jimmy Ballard. Now, Jimmy Ballard has always been kind of an outsider in the golf world. He was pretty big in the 80s and 90s and worked with a number of big name golfers, including Tom Kite, Curtis Strange, and Larry Nelson. In chapter one, he talks about connection and a concept he calls the seven common denominators. This really is an intro. He defines those concepts later in the book. Chapter two, he talks about golf's misleading terms. This seems like a filler chapter as is it's a little out of place. It's something you would normally see at the end of a book. It's really a list of things that he doesn't like that are taught in traditional golf instruction. I said he wasn't in the mainstream of instructors. For example, he doesn't recommend you keep your lead arm straight in the backswing. Other things he doesn't like are keeping your head down or still, or as I put it, don't keep your eye on the ball, pulling the club with the left hand, staying behind the ball, finishing with a reverse C. He thinks you should finish standing straight up. Chapter three is where he gets into the meat of the book. He starts out talking about the weightlifter's position. You see him holding this bag out in front of him and then holding it close. It's a good analogy. When you're lifting something heavy, when you've got your arms out and your back is bent, it's not really an athletic position. Of course, this is really about your stance. It's one of his fundamentals. When he gets to talking about connecting the arms to the body, this is the main point he's trying to make. This picture on 58 and 59 do a good job of talking about arm connection. He's really talking about keeping your arms tight against the body, not letting them stretch out and out till they're on their own. And he has his first common denominator rule. The golfer must create connection at the outset through a braced connected address position. In chapter four, he talks about your pre-swing routine. It's good info, but nothing you haven't heard before and nothing you really have to do. I think it's just his opinion. Chapter five, he talks about the triangle. A lot of people have seen this information where you talk about checking your triangle or forming a triangle with your arms and your in your club. And again, he uses Ben Hogan as his example of someone who's correct in his triangle at his setup. He talks about the takeaway and your triangle in the takeaway. A lot of people have done this, but he was talking about it in the early 80s. And we're at the second common denominator. The golfer must begin the swing by taking the triangle and center away together. In chapter six, he talks about the backswing and coiling and coiling behind the ball. Now, this is an excellent chapter. I think if you bought the book for nothing else but for this chapter, you would benefit from his advice. He has some very good pictures here as well on how to get coiled correctly or turned correctly behind the ball. Not too far forward, not too far back. He also talks about right side power. He favors driving the swing with your right side. You know, a lot of people aren't in favor of that, but he very much favors it. He uses an example of slapping like you're slapping a golf cart and trying to move the golf cart to teach you to use your right side. And he's got common denominator number three. The golfer must coil the triangle and center behind the ball into the brace of the right leg. Chapter seven is about change of direction. He talks about the purpose of coiling the triangle, which is to get into the strongest position to reverse the direction. He uses the right foot and right leg to reverse direction from the top of the backswing. Basically, you coil back until you feel it in your foot, and then you turn back hard using your feet and legs. Specifically, with a kick of your right foot and leg not with the hands and arms. He does not begin the downswing with the arms. And then he's got the fourth common denominator. The golfer must reverse the club with the right foot and right knee to create the proper position at the top of the backswing. Chapter eight, 
he talks about firing the right side, and he very much favors firing the right side. The common denominator that goes along with this is the golfer must initiate the change of direction with the right foot and right knee. Immediately release the entire right side and center, ensuring the triangle returns to the original position, scoring the club to the ball at impact. You know, he talks a lot about the triangle formed with the arms. He never explicitly says it, but it's clear from his teaching and the illustrations that he's teaching that the arms need to stay in front of your body, that they don't swing around your body. When he talks about coiling, he says coil to the chest, the center of the chest to a position directly above the right knee. His last common denominator is the straight and balanced finish. He devotes an entire chapter to the finish. He definitely is opposed to the reverse C. He thinks you should finish straight up, standing straight up instead of in a reverse C. And I think I agree with him on that. The last chapter is a review of the information he has presented in the book. Overall, this is a good book. It's got a couple of great points in it, but I'm not sure that it's for everybody. It's definitely not a beginner's book. If you're new to golf, this is not the book to start with. But it does talk about some fundamentals that people often miss out on. Maintaining your triangle, maintaining your arm connection, coiling, coiling over the right foot, and how to start the downswing with your feet. These are all good things for people to know. Again, the book is How to Perfect Your Golf Swing by Jimmy Ballard, published in 1981.